Hello again. Um, now we're going to switch over from the iConfigure focus to tying the iConfigure styles into your CalWorks session. As you can see right now, I have open a uh, CalWorks 2016 uh, dialog, and we're going to go ahead and jump on it. Uh, I'm already in a new drawing, but we'll start off from scratch just to make this 100%. Okay, so you start a new drawing. In this case, I'll pick Lion Oil. Start a new drawing of Lion Oil. Okay. Now, the first thing, the way that you tie in iConfigure into your plant setup is through your setup. <laughs> so type in setup. And you all should probably be familiar with this dialog screen. You're going to go to your second option here, the configuration settings. And as you can see, it currently lists which configuration you're running. Assuming you're not in the right one, we're going to go ahead and load. And you're going to go to CalWorks 2016, config files, whichever client you're running, we're going to say Lion Oil, and then pick your configuration file. Now this should already be set up properly, but some people, <laughs> some people don't have it set up properly. So the one thing you need to do for isogen styles <laughs> is set this variable. This should already be set to zero, but this is the one that seems to change every now and then as people are using the software. So we're going to go ahead and make sure this is blanked out. <clears throat> what this allows you to do, the Isogen default style, it allows you to pick one particular style that you are forcing your drafters to run with. So that if you're in a, a bigger setup, say you're in a project that's going to last a couple years, and you want to be able to control which ISO style is currently being run, um, it allows you to do that. I prefer to leave it blank. Um, I, I say that because if you leave it blank, it allows you to tie into everything that uh, is in your iConfigure window. So everything that you've tied in so far into your iConfigure software. So as you can see here, oh, what's what's going on here? I can't. I don't see anything. This is weird. Oh, well, it's because sometimes iConfigure hides your main bar. What's up with that? Oh well. Well, if you ever see a screen that looks like this, don't fret. It's just hiding there. Okay. See, all those different clients that we've ever established, they are all tied into our iConfigure software. So if we leave this blank, this will query all of them, not just not just one. Okay. So let's uh, assume we're changing something here. We'll put a slash on there or something. Okay. You want to save and close after you make those changes, not just apply, because the save and, save and close will actually modify the configuration file, so that way those settings are saved for future sessions. So we'll go ahead and save and close. Okay. So now we have that pulled in. So what does it look like? What, it, what, is it, uh, what does it mean that you have full access to your iConfig? Well, we're going to come here, we'll go to 8 inch, pick a spec from your client, and draw the piping arrangement. Okay. I'll go ahead and zoom on that. Okay. Now that we have piping in our model, we can use the let's pull it to the side here. Calworks plant one. And in under the Calworks plant one uh, ribbon you can find a panel called isogen. This isogen panel um, has the isogen out, isogen batch and a few other things we'll cover in the next lesson. Um, Isogen out brings up your dialogue screen. Now this is important to understand the differences between Isogen out and Isogen batch because Isogen batch will not bring up this dialogue. I don't know why they decided that that was the way they wanted to do it, but that's the way they wanted to do it. So your Isogen out, whatever you set this to and you run with, that's what Isogen Batch will automatically pull from when it's running its routine. So if you want to batch, you need to make sure you already do an Isogen out for the proper uh, style. Okay, so as you can see here, all those clients under the CalWorks support Isogen are here. Uh, Boardwalk, CPL, Kingdom Morgan, Line Oil. Uh, so we're going with Line Oil, so let's keep it that way. If you had more job numbers than one, they would all appear here uh, as a project because we assign uh, job numbers on the project level. Okay, and style you can see like we talked about before, there are two styles: the check and the fin the final. Okay, we'll go ahead and run with our final. We click OK, 
and then it prompts us down here. We can pick by line number, which is what you would normally do. Although Isogen Out is more known for its select component feature because I and many people do use Isogen Out for troubleshooting. So if your, your system is not running and you need to find out why, uh, you come here. Now you do that after you do a discontinuity check. See, I spin that, no results found. This dis discontinuity uh, uh, flyout lets you tell if there's a disconnect in your piping system. It's very useful. You want to you wanna be aware if that's causing an error. But if it's not a discontinuity issue and you're still getting errors on your run, the next step would be to select components. And then you like select components. And instead of selecting the entire system, you would start from a beginning to end mentality. So I'd, I'd select these three components and then run it and see if it runs. If it runs good, then I know that the issue, whatever's causing the problem, is down the road. Sometimes the issues that we find when we're running an isogen out aren't necessarily hard uh, hard issues, which means um, it may not be a component, like this elbow could be corrupt. That would be a hard issue. A soft issue is something like this is connected to another piece of pipe and that pipe is corrupt. So your issue is outside of the, the system you're in, it's actually something connected to it. So beware of that. There are things that can cause uh, an isogen fail that aren't part of your line number. Um, so we'll talk about that on the next session as well. So let's go ahead and do an isogen out. Uh, if you don't want to use the buttons, IGO does isogen out. Okay, go ahead and pick our style. We already have it selected, click okay. I'm gonna go ahead and select component do a little window over all the components I want to run. Right click. And there's our... Okay, eyes have been completed successfully. Total plot files produced, one. And this is where it's located and what it's named. It's going to default right now to whatever the generic line numbering system is. Uh, this should be your line number. Okay. okay. And it's not going to open it, even though I'm sure we can reconfigure it so it does. But for now, what you'll have to do is, and I recommend you just put the shortcut on your desktop. Um, go to your C drive. So let's go to our C drive. Now, before you even start up, you need to make sure you have an isometrics folder, which we should have already discussed. Okay. After you make the isometrics folder, all your isos will generate in here. The mentality for this is that you do a lot of ISO runs, and sometimes you'll have multiple designers running on a system. So you really want to be able to run your own ISOs. And then when they're good enough, or when they're up to snuff, you can go ahead and grab these and bring them into the J drive folder for your client, okay? So we're gonna open that ISO, make sure it looks pretty, okay? So as you can see, the run looks pretty smooth. There are some things I would consider issues. I see that we have the one of one sheets right here. Um, that, that seems a little odd to me, but I do notice that this client's border doesn't have the sheet by sheet area. So perhaps for this client, they decided to just put the sheet numbers right there. So we have one sheet of a total of one sheets produced. Okay. Go ahead and close out of that. Now going back on a previous topic, we said troubleshoot. So the, ice, the, the line's not running. We've already done discontinuity, we don't have any disconnects. We've already isogened out piece by piece and we can't find an individual element. So if I just run a single piece of pipe and the, the fail still happens, there's two possibilities. One, there is a loop error, which is an error that's happened and is embedded inside the software. Um, this can normally be resolved just by closing out of the software and coming back in. Sometimes in, in the many, many operations that we perform, something goes aloof. Okay. Um, the other option, if it's not a loop error, if you come back into the software and it still has an issue, it might be your isogen style itself. So how do you check that? Well, let's go back into isogen out. Okay. Um, to test your style, to make sure that there's nothing going on with that, we build in the check. The check is a default out of the box style. So if this one runs and this one doesn't, then your style is to play. And this is the kind of mentality you need to build up. You need to build up a, a if-then statement in your mind. If this is the problem, then this is the problem. So we're going to go ahead and run a check on the same system.
Okay, we open that up, and as you can see, we get a default in a graph order. Check isometric only, do not issue. And this gives us a way to check that, let's see the piping's running fine. So if this comes out and your other style doesn't, you know where to uh, point your attention to. Okay. And now that we have that. And just like isogen out, isogen batch is the button right here to the right. As you can tell, when I clicked on isogen batch, as you can see here is the command prompt down here, um, it did not prompt me for a style. Again, when you run a batch, it's going to run the last style you used in isogen out. Okay? So here, it shows me all my available line numbers, and I only have one, the default one that came in when we generated this pipe. So, we click OK. Okay. So the question would be, most of you should ask this. Why would I use isogen batch over isogen out? What's what's the difference besides it not using, not giving me the option to pick a style? Well, there is something to be said about what we can get from isogen batch. Let's go ahead and add in a little something here. Let's add in some flanges, and let's add in a valve. Let's add in a ball valve. Okay. Okay. Let's say that. After that, we come to this. When we come to the valve, it changes line numbers. Let's say it's now uh, 1008. Okay. Okay. The thing that separates isogen out from isogen batch is isogen batch goes one step further and queries the connected piping to this line number. So, I'm going to type in isogen batch, which is the same as pressing the button. And we're gonna run this. So the thing that you get from batch that you don't get from isogen out is that once the system is run, it will add in the connected piping components that are on a on an alternate line number. So when there's a line number change like 1008 is different from the, the default one that we were running, it's gonna throw in a dotted component. And connection text showing how what it continues on, where it continues on the, the uh, east, northing, and elevation. Okay, so in the long run, when you produce ISOs, you're gonna run a batch because you want that connecting connecting text, and that goes into our second lesson too on how to do that in a way that produces those connection points. Okay, okay. that covers it for now.